So now let's look at a dual duct selection using selection software. First of all, I come over and select a dual duct. I double click. Now we've got our choice of a, uh, we've got a lot of different models here. Um, we've got units with and without mixing attenuators. We'll go ahead and do one with a mixing attenuator. And let's say we uh, have a cooling design airflow of 800 CFM and a heating design flow of 400 CFM. And we have a minimum cooling requirement of uh, let's say 200 CFM and we're not going to put in a minimum heating requirement because we don't ever want to uh, heat during the cooling mode. Our system static pressure defaults to one inch. Um, that, that's pretty reasonable choice there. That would work with uh, most dual duct applications. And then our downstream static pressure again defaults to 0.25 inches, which is a good conservative number to represent the pressure drop after the box. The only reason why we might want to raise uh, the 0.25 to a higher value would be the dual duct boxes were often used in hospitals and uh, we might uh, have HEPA filters downstream from the unit. So we may in some applications have to raise that above a quarter of an inch. Once again we have our options for different lining materials to go in the box. Uh, let's just uh, say we're going to go ahead and leave it with the fiberglass lining and we'll go over here and make a selection. And you'll see here that uh, the unit came up with mismatched inlets. And that's not unusual when you have dual duct boxes in a variable volume application. We know that we need more air for cooling than we need for heating, so it only makes sense that the hot duct is smaller than the cold duct. You'll see here we have a minimum pressure requirement of 0 0.71. That's a lot higher than you'll find with a single duct VAV box and that's because dual duct boxes with mixing chambers are designed to blend hot and cold air together. Those two air streams will not blend together by themselves so this box has to have some mixing baffles, sometimes some perforated plates. It has to have some way of generating some turbulence to get that hot and cold air to mix together. Now sound wise our radiated sound level is 21, that's NC21, and our discharge sound level is NC18. Those are both low sound levels. Um, dual duct boxes are typically used in hospitals and laboratories and uh, these kind of sound levels are so low that they would be good enough to go into a conference room in a, in a standard office building. So these sorts of sound levels would definitely be acceptable in a healthcare application. Now let's look at fan powered units.